What's going on everyone? Today we're taking a look at a new scooter. This is the In Motion Climber. This is a dual motor scooter that's going to be perfect for anybody that lives in a hilly area or just wants a very torquey scooter. So before we dive into the specs, I do want to give them credit on their packaging. A lot of companies these days just throw your scooter in an unbranded brown box. It's not really much effort put into it, but this one had a very nice packaging. It was just a good looking box and everything inside was very well packed. At the end of the day, the box doesn't matter too much as long as it's well packed, but similar to like getting a new cell phone, it's just much better to have that good box and get a much better unboxing experience. So the one I have here is in black with some orange accents on the wheels, brakes, and then some of the cables as well. But they also have this scooter in a few more colors. So coming down to the motors, as I said earlier, this is a dual motor scooter. And this is dual 750 watt motors with a peak of 1500 watts. Nice little orange accent painted on the wheel there as well. Same thing with the front wheel. Taking a look at the wheels, these are 10 inch modular wheels. So this whole wheel is kind of like a pancake design. So it kind of just comes apart like this and the other part comes over here. This way it, it makes it very easy to take it apart and change out your inner tube if you do get a flat. And they also include two free inner tubes with the scooter as well. Taking a look at the brakes over here, we have a rear disc brake. This is a mechanical brake. In front, we have a electronic brake. They are both controlled by the same lever. Personally, I like to see Two levers, one for each, but as long as it's a good working brake, I guess that's okay. Coming down to the tread here, you have a nice pattern. The whole thing is all gray, which I do prefer over black. With a black tread, as soon as you put your foot here, you're gonna see a big dirty footprint, and it just looks very ugly after a few rides. With this, you could ride it a few more times. You're still gonna see some dirt, but it's not gonna be as bad as the black one. Right under this, we have a 48 volt, 14.7 amp hour battery, which is definitely a good amount of range. For me, that's like the sweet spot when it comes to scooters, anything less than 10 or 11, then that's gonna give me range anxiety, but 13 and up, I would say it's a good comfortable battery size to have without adding too much weight that is. And then speaking of the weight, the scooter weighs 45.8 pounds, which is a good middle of the road weight, not too light, but it's also not too heavy either. If you have to carry this up and down stairs, not gonna be that much of a struggle compared to a 60 or 70 uh, pound scooter. Coming up to the bars, you have a thumb throttle, nice little rubber pad here as well. Little uh, grippy dots on it too. Between a thumb throttle and twist throttle, both very similar. They both work the same, it just comes down to preference, but personally I always prefer thumb throttles on my e-bikes and scooters. I just feel like it's a little more easier to use and I can just relax my hand and just do that. And it's not as much as doing this and holding that down for a long period of time. Looking at the screen, it is one of the more basic screens, kind of the average screen you get on any scooter. So you got all the information here and a little control button down here. So you got your speed, your battery power, miles per hour, and then you got, you tap it for your light, and then you double tap it to change your mode. You have walk mode, drive mode, and then sport mode. Last but not least, this bike is also app connected as well, and you get more information here. So you don't get much here, but you do get a lot more information here. So you got your ride time, your ride mileage, your max speed you were riding, and your total mileage. And then right down here, you have your lock and unlock. So if you lock this, you can see the scooter comes locked and you can't do anything with it. So if someone tries to steal your scooter while you're away, it's a nice little added security bonus. No one can get on it and start riding. Another cool thing is when it's locked, it also applies a lot of pressure on the wheels. So if I try to push this right now with one hand, it's very difficult. It feels like I'm trying to push a 200 pound scooter or something. It adds a lot of resistance so no one can just hop on it and right away. If they wanted to steal it, they'll have to pick it up and lift it. But if it's locked, I'm not sure how they unlock it, but maybe they can, maybe they can't, but nice to have that added uh, security bonus there. And then once you get back to the scooter, just click that unlock button and that'll release the friction and let you go on your way. Besides that, you can also control your headlights from the app as well. Another cool thing is this scooter has an advanced BMS. So it balances out your batteries in the scooter, keeps an eye on all of them to make sure they stay balanced. And you can see right here, I haven't seen this in any other scooter, but you can see it tells you the voltage of every single battery. So if something is wrong and your scooter's not working, you could probably come in here and check. Maybe one of your batteries is improperly balanced. In that case, you could just tell warranty. So nice to see that as again, I have not seen that in any other scooter. Coming to the settings, you have a speed clamp setting here. So if a new rider's riding this, or if you just don't want to go fast, you can put that speed clamp on there. You can change your ride mode. Again, that has drive and sport. This does have cruise control as well, which is always good to have. Zero start. 
Uh, so basically with zero start on, you can just flick this throttle while it's not moving and it'll lunge forward. Some people like having that. Honestly, for safety reasons, I would say leave that on. It really doesn't take much effort to do that one tiny push. You only got to move this like one mile per hour. It's much safer. I would say leave it on because if you have it off, if I have it parked right here and you accidentally touch this or a kid comes and pushes it, the whole thing will lunge forward and it puts you at danger and also uh, risks putting the scooter in danger as well and damaging it. So honestly, I see no reason to turn that off. Definitely uh, have that safety feature on there. Another thing I have not seen, brake force. So as I said earlier, this has an electronic brake on the front and you can actually adjust how much force this has. So if you feel they're too grabby and they're stopping you too quickly, you go ahead and lower that. If it's not stopping you enough, you go ahead and hire that much more as well. So uh, nice little uh, tuning you can do there. Then you have vehicle calibration. So this has throttle calibration and brake calibration. So if you feel like your throttle or your brakes are not working properly, you can come in here and recalibrate them. Maybe there's a delay or a laggy feel, and this will go ahead and uh, fix that up for you. Then you have firmware upgrade, diagnosis. So if something's wrong with your scooter, it'll tell you if it detects any errors. So uh, overall, nice and clean app, but a lot of features there as well. Last but not least, you do have a front headlight built into the bars. It doesn't look like it's going to be that bright, but it should be good enough for road visibility. And then coming to the back, you have an integrated tail light, which also blinks when you push the brake as well. All right, so first impressions, I definitely like these hand grips. They're uh, the thicker kind. A lot of scooters have thinner hand grips, similar to what an e-bike has. And honestly, I don't think those are as comfortable on a scooter. When it comes to electric scooters, I definitely like these uh, fatter ones like we have here. Uh, tires do a good job of soaking up the cracks and bumps in the sidewalk here. It's not gonna be as good as a full suspension or front suspension scooter but definitely not bad either so far the acceleration feels nice and smooth which is good to see i always like to uh, test these uh, bikes and scooters on drive mode first because i think there's a place for speed there's a place for riding chill some bikes don't do both well on drive mode right now this is a very smooth and controlled acceleration if you're a new rider this shouldn't be a problem it's not going to startle you or throw you off or anything like that it does have cruise control as you can see right now well, i'm not sure if you can see the screen but right now it's locked into place i could just let off the throttle and cruise always a good thing to have because if you're going on a longer ride holding down that thumb throttle for uh, quite some time can leave you with a sore thumb so it's always nice to have the ability to just relax and coast along with that being said if you do use cruise control keep in mind be a uh, very uh alert when you have it because it's not going to slow down unless you push the brakes so if you're not paying attention you can easily crash into something as it's just going to maintain your speed without your input so if you're a new rider i would highly recommend not using cruise control at first and as you get more comfortable then go ahead and uh, enable that or if you're in a very crowded area with a lot of people or a lot of riders then you should probably leave the cruise control off in general yeah brakes feel very smooth right now it's at uh, 19 miles per hour i believe stop very very smoothly it's not too grabby uh, one thing I hate about a lot of scooters, especially more cheaper scooters under a thousand bucks, you hit the brakes sometimes and it makes you feel like you want to fly forward and lunge over the handlebars. I mean, I guess they do that so you could stop more, but it's just, it's just not a very controlled stop and you got to really tap on it and be very mindful. So uh, no complaints about the brakes either. They are mechanical brakes on the rear disc, but honestly on a scooter, besides pushing a little more pressure to stop it on the handle, there's really not that much of a difference. In general, when you combine a mechanical brake with a digital brake up front, it usually balances it out and it feels about the same. All right, so double click it to switch it. Oh, whoo, ho, ho, ho. Sometimes on these scooters, when you switch it from drive mode to sport mode, there's a little bit of a difference, but not too much. But this one, oh, what a difference. Like just that initial pull from zero to, oh, let me see what it is, zero, all right, right when you hit about 12 or 13 miles per hour, you feel a pull in the front. And because that's because it's a dual motor scooter, but it almost makes you feel like you're about to pop a wheelie. Like it just feels like it's about to lift up. It's just a very, a very strong pull. Oh man, that's nice. I've said this in other videos, but if you have the choice between top speed or more torque, hands down, go with more torque. Cause at the end of the day, more torque is not only a lot more useful but it's a lot more fun as well just that 
ability to go from zero to 20 in a much quicker time and that initial pool is just so much more enjoyable. Oh, they were not kidding when they said this was a hill climbing scooter. I don't have hills to test around here, but this is definitely a strong scooter. One thing I will mention between e-bikes and scooters, a dual motor 500 watt scooter is always going to perform better than a 1000 watt single motor scooter. You just get so much more torque. Top end speed is probably gonna be about the same, but having those two motors really does change the overall experience. So if you have the choice between the two, hands down, go with the dual motor every single time. For the price that this scooter costs, I cannot believe that it has this amount of power. If someone told me this scooter costed $500 more than it does, I would believe them because it does have a whole bunch of low end torque. Let me see if I can get a top speed run over here before I hit this stop sign. 20, 22, 23, 23 and then cruise control kicked in. So I'm assuming that's somewhere around the top end speed. Oh man, I went up that sidewalk right now and it had a little hill on it. And usually you feel a, a slowdown and then it picks up because of the hill. But this one, it didn't, it did not sweat at all. Like I don't have any hills in my area, but I can already feel the power this thing has. All right, let me see if I can do a top end. 22, 23. All right, it looks like I'm not getting much more than 23. If I pulled it a little longer and there was a little less wind, I probably could have pushed it to 24, maybe even 25, but 23 seems to be about the maximum that I usually get, but definitely not bad. 23 is not a bad speed at all. I think 23 is uh, more than good enough for most people. Unless you plan to ride on the roads with cars often, you need to go 30 miles per hour or something. Oh accidentally put it in walk mode I was wondering why I was going so slow but yeah unless you have plans to ride on the road with cars you need to go 30 plus then you look at something else but for most regular uses of riding around the streets going down trails this speed is definitely uh more than enough and it's a whole different class when you're going to a scooter that has 30 40 miles per hour that's not even a regular scooter anymore that's when you're going to a, an electric motorcycle almost so I wouldn't even bother uh comparing the two but on a scooter like this you definitely want it to go about 20 and up yeah, having these uh, fatter grips definitely helps uh, soak up some of the bumps as well because if you have thinner grips, when you hit these bumps, a lot of those bumps travel into the bars and you end up with sore hands by the time you get home. But these fatter grips definitely help absorb a lot of that. So this scooter has a 14.7 amp hour battery, which is to me the perfect ideal size for a lower weight commuting scooter like this one. Less than 14, well, I would say about 12. Less than 12, that's when you start to get pretty limited with the range and personally end up with some uh, range anxiety. But as long as you're uh, above those 12 amp hours, that's when you're gonna get a good amount of range and be able to ride a good distance. 20 amp hours is good too. Well, obviously more is better, but with more battery comes more weight. And personally for a commuter scooter, I like to keep them a little lighter. If you're gonna go with a bigger battery, you might as well just go with a bigger scooter in general, because uh, it's not really gonna be portable anyways. But I think as long as you keep it around 15 amp hours or less on a scooter that's when it, it's able to maintain that under 55 pounds or so weight it may not seem like a big difference when you compare a scooter that's 50 pounds to 60 pounds i think this one's 47 pounds and uh, i have a scooter that's uh i think 58 pounds and just lifting them up a few stairs you definitely feel the difference so if you're going for a commuter scooter you're gonna be taking the scooter to work or carrying it up and down stairs a lot definitely uh, keep the weight in mind and try to get it as light as you can. Well, as light as you can without sacrificing too much specs, of course, because you can get a really light scooter, but chances are it's gonna have a weak motor, a weak battery, and it's just not gonna be a very good scooter. But yeah, I think this is definitely the perfect middle ground as far as speed, weight, battery goes. So this scooter has a rated range of 35 miles. If you're going maybe 10 to 12 miles per hour, I can definitely see you getting that with this battery. But if you go quicker, then you would definitely get less. I'm gonna say somewhere about 20 to 25 will be the average with a faster ride. If you're going full throttle the entire time and you have a hilly area, it could probably go as low as 15 or 10. But I mean, that applies to any electric scooter or e-bike. Faster you ride, the less range you get. For, for nice cruising, 
you should be able to get some good range on the scooter yeah so i don't have many hills in my area so i can't test the hill climbing performance but like i said you could just feel it off the line it pulls you on drive mode it feels like a regular scooter which is good it feels like any other single motor scooter i'm not sure if it twitches down to one motor or it just cuts down both but it just feels like a regular scooter at that point but once you switch into sport mode that's when you feel it really really pulling you so if you live in a hilly area this is definitely going to dominate any hill yeah overall this is definitely a very solid scooter i have no complaints about it everything on it works well i think for the market they're trying to hit it checks all the boxes but unlike most other scooters in this price range this one also has dual motors as well so if you live in a hilly area or just want a scooter that has a lot of torque then this scooter is definitely a great option to look at all right well that about wraps up this video as usual if you have any questions at all feel free to drop me a comment and let me know otherwise thanks for watching and i'll see you all next time